What's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to our next lesson in the C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about references. And you can think about this in terms of the other meaning of a reference, which is an alias, as is bolded in the text over here. And you're going to find that this is our second use of the ampersand symbol, which we've seen in a previous lesson. Remember, ampersand meant address of. Well, this time we're going to see how references or reference type is an alias or another name for some other variable in our program. So let's go ahead and take a look at it with an example. So what I've got here again is references. I'll move out of the way just so you can see that big word again, alias. But let's go ahead and see an example here on the left side just so we can see what exactly this means here. And I'll make this just a little bit bigger with the font so that you can see. Okay. So what I've got here, again, is just some variable, x equals 42. I'm going to print out the value and the address at which x lives in memory. So let's go ahead and run this program just to go ahead and see that it works here. x, the value is 42, and there is some memory address here. So not too bad. So what I want to go ahead and do now is introduce a reference. And what this is going to be is the int and the ampersand, and I'm just going to call this ref short for references and set it equal to x here so this part here int and the ampersand that's part of the type here it's another way you can think of it as a sort of a type qualifier so i'm just going to kind of write this out int with the ampersand is the full type for a reference type you can think of it like a qualifier like other ones that we learned of, like const or signed or unsigned or these different things for variables. But for now, we should just know that it's a reference type. So what exactly happens when I create this ref and set it equal to x? Well, let's go ahead and print out the value of ref and the address. So go ahead and copy these two lines here. And instead of x's value, we'll look at the ref value and the ref address. That's our variable name here. And sometimes when I'm doing these little experiments here, I like to just line everything up. That makes it a little bit easier to compare and see what's going on. Okay, so let's go ahead and just make this a little bit smaller so you can see everything at once. And um, let's just make sure that this is a lowercase x. There we go. And let's go ahead and run this. So what's interesting here is you'll see that the ref value is 42 and the address is actually the same as x's. So it's a little bit strange here what's going on here, uh, maybe if this is your first time seeing references. But again, the idea is that we just have another variable name, ref, that can refer to x. So behind the scenes, what the C++ compiler is doing is essentially everywhere where we see ref, it's just replacing it with x here and x here. So it's the same thing, and we can refer to the same named location memory, that is x here, a variable name, with ref. Okay. So what's sort of the point of this? You might be saying, well, Mike, why don't we just use X? Or, okay, maybe if we have a really long variable name, we can refer to it by a shorter name. Well, those wouldn't necessarily be the reasons that we need references. The most common use of reference is we're going to learn about a new sort of way to pass data in functions, which is pass by reference. That is the ability to pass a variable that already exists in some scope into a function and modify it. So that's usually the primary use where we want to use references. And that avoids a copy because we're looking at the same variable. The other reason we tend to like references is they're a little bit safer. So when we tend to use memory, references must be initialized to something that exists. So for example, if I don't assign ref to x when I compile this code, it's going to say, hey, this was declared as a reference, but it wasn't initialized. So we at least know that when we're assigning this on creation that it exists, it must. And I'll give you just a little bit of a teaser, although it won't necessarily make sense right now, but when we use pointer types, so let me go ahead and just create Y here um, and set it to something uh, and then a uh, reference to some pointer type here. Uh, I'm just going to call it ref2 equals Y. Well, this is actually illegal. Um, and let me actually uh, assign this to X here. And when I compile it and I run it, well, maybe it's not going to tell me it's illegal right away. Um, and this will work here. 
Let me actually see how smart G++ is with the warnings here. Uh, it will give us this unused variable here, but we're actually not allowed to do this. So for folks who are coming and watching this from a C video, we're not allowed to refer to something that is null with a reference or that has no data inside of it, if you want to think about that once we talk about pointers. Even though this worked, it's still illegal. And I'm going to put my proof here in the ISO CPP uh, standard here. And you can go ahead and search for the word illegal, and this is not allowed. So even though the compiler doesn't seem to catch that error here. Um, OK, so that's what I uh, showed you. Or rather, this idea that we can't have a reference to something that we're dereferencing that is null here. OK? All right. So again, a reference itself is a type to the same piece of data. And there's one more thing I want to show you with this, and it's with using something called type info, which allows you to sort of inspect or see the actual types of your data here. So let me go ahead and add one more line here. And we can actually see the type information here of x here. Uh, so it is type ID, variable, name. And I'm going to repeat the same thing for our ref but this time making sure that we refer to uh, ref here. And let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it all at once on the screen here. I'll rerun it and we can see that X's type is I. And well, since we're referring to the same exact thing, the ref itself, this int ampersand itself must be an integer because we are able to modify it in just the same way here. So regardless if I do say X equals 43 here. And let's just go ahead and run this to show that we get 43 everywhere. Or if I do ref equals 43 and rerun it, we still get 43 everywhere. Because remember, x and ref can be used interchangeably. They're just aliases. And we can see again that they're the same type using this type ID trick here. And I'll go ahead and just bring in the type ID operator here just so you can see on the C++ reference page where this came from. It's not something that we really need to worry about right now, but it's handy to know about that you can sometimes query and figure out the type that you're working with uh, by using that little uh, code snippet here. Type ID, the name of the variable, and dot name will give you some string representation. In this case, for an integer, just i. OK, folks, so I hope that was useful, and I hope you know that there's this new thing called references. And it's whenever we create the actual type, we must assign it to something. We put the little ampersand after the type name, and we set it equal to something that already exists so we can refer to it by new alias. This is going to become important when we start passing data around in functions, which we'll see in a future lesson upcoming. All right, folks, so make sure to check in on the next lesson, subscribe so that you don't miss it, and we'll see you in the next one. I hope you're enjoying the series.